Well, it's great to be uh, back in the great state of New South Wales. And uh, one of the things I'm doing today is, of course, launching our New South Wales plan for the future. Uh, that plan uh, outlines uh, all the investments we intend to make in the state of New South Wales in the period ahead and our proud record of achievement, including in this part of the world, uh, new uh, school libraries, uh, new trades training centres, uh, new computers and Bede Polding School, uh, which is where I was the other day. Are you enjoying your, your laptops out there? Yes. Okay. That's right. And I saw someone here from Penrith High, did I? That's right. And you got some computers out there? We sure do. Okay. So today I was speaking to the National Press Club and I said, one of the things that politics is about is making a difference in people's lives. And I said, take the million computers we've been putting into schools. And one of the great responses I get from across the country is when I speak to young people like these folks and say, did you have these computers before in the schools? And so one for one. And the answer is no. no. The answer is no. OK. So I didn't know these kids were here. That's the answer. Um, and what does my heart such uh, so, so well uh, is the fact that your lives are changing as a result. Because the alternative would be to have what we call the digital divide, which is that kids going to really rich schools, they have one computer per person. Kids going to other schools don't. Now, our policy is every kid should have access to computer-based education. And that's one of the reasons why we want to make sure that none of you guys fall behind. And that's why we're also putting out the National Broadband Network. So all the good people of Windsor, all the good people of Windsor and right across uh, this uh, a uh, great uh, part of um, Greater Western Sydney and into the mountains uh, is, um, is properly serviced with high-speed broadband because we don't want that digital divide either whereby some people get high-speed broadband and others don't. And regrettably, that's where Mr Abbott wants to take the nation which is in the direction of, um, I think, uh, leaving a divide which is unnecessary. So our plan for New South Wales and our plan for regions such as this is all about making sure that we have high-speed broadband for everybody, we have computers for schools, doesn't matter where your school comes from, that our kids are getting the best possible education, that we're investing also in your local hospitals and health system, and recently I was at Westmead for a bigger proposed investment in the upgrade of Westmead because it's so important for Greater Western Sydney. And on top of that also, to make sure we're growing the jobs of the future as well, so that everyone out here has a decent uh, opportunity to work, to get a pay packet and to raise their families and to live in decency for the future. That's what we're on about. That's what an Australian Labor government is about. Don't always get it right, but let me tell you, the major thrust is not bad when you can trust it with the alternative. So we're about building, we're about building our nation's future, building our community's future, building the jobs of the future, the schools of the future, the, uh, the broadband of the future, the hospitals of the future, the clean energy future, which we all need. Uh, for our kids and our grandkids. Mm -hmm. So we're in the building business, the other bloke's in the cutting business. He's got, a, he's got an axe ready to go whack, whack and whack, because that's the only thing they know how to do on that side of politics. But what worries me about that is it affects your schools, and it affects your jobs, and it affects your broadband, and it affects real people's lives. Which brings me to where we are today in this wonderful square called Thompson Square. Um, and uh, where's Dougie? Yeah. There's Dougie. <laughs> okay. Dougie has been, everyone know Doug? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anyone in Australia doesn't know about Dougie. Because as you know, he speaks that wonderfully broad Australian accent. <laughs> That's every... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's right, he's a good man. Anyway, yeah. Dougie told me all about Thompson Square recently and we spoke about what was necessary. And so I'm always reluctant to uh, pronounce on on local communities when I'm someone from the outside and particularly from the great state of Queensland. But let me just say this. When I look at a square like this and being a reasonable student of Australian history, I'm impressed when people gather together to say there are things worth preserving. Uh, I know my colonial history reasonably and I know what a, a progressive reformer, Governor Lachlan Macquarie was. I know the history. I know how he fell out with uh, the New South Wales Corps and how he fell out with the authorities in London at the time. And one of the reasons he fell out was he tried to look out for people and actually engage in building the colony as it then was and building its public works and providing convicts with a second chance. Yeah. And so this square, I'm told, is named after a person called Thompson, who himself was an offender 
and was brought out here free of charge by her, His Majesty's Government at the time <laughs> as a convict. I presume he got steerage class. Uh, and, uh, and then upon emancipation, which usually after sentences of seven years, um, he started a new life and he became a burger of this part of the world. Uh, and then the square was named after him. And this is a good story. It's about what Australia is. Wherever you've come from, you can always make it your own future. And we've always been a country and a culture that's encouraged that. My own forebears are much the same. Uh, the Rudds are convicts through and through. Um, we have, a, we have a almost 100% criminal background. <laughs> well, on my father's side anyway. <laughs> and uh, I won't give you the whole story. But uh, my forebear, Thomas Rudd, had the unique uh, opportunity of being transported to Sydney twice. <laughs> to be a repeat offender at the end of the 18th century took real talent. <laughs> to come here for seven years, go back, and to re-offend and come back again is unique. He must have liked the joint. He's been a slow learner. He must have liked the place. But what's interesting, after he finished his second period um, at His Majesty's pleasure, uh, he then went out and settled Campbelltown, uh, which, as you know, was also one of the Macquarie towns. In Campbelltown, you'll see this beautiful Georgian church and you'll see some of the remnants from that time. But when you get to the 1820s, you start to see letters from my forebear, Thomas Rudd, written to the local newspaper, the Sydney Gazette, arguing to His Excellency the Governor, whoever it was in the 1820s, probably just after Macquarie's time, um, demanding public works in Campbelltown. <laughs> so there you go, a, a bloke, a crim, who was actually sent down twice, uh, uh, out of the Old Bailey, out here, served 14 years and then becomes one of the civic fathers of Campbelltown. You know something? That's a great Australian story. Uh, Thompson of Thompson Square is a great Australian story. And this community that we're here in today is a great Australian story as well. I'm told that uh, the Macquarie Arms is where the good governor himself uh, came and, uh, and uh, broke bread. Uh, dated 1815, these are early days from the colonial history. But it's quite remarkable if you look at the history of colonial Australia that uh, you have a square like this, which so much of which has been preserved. And so can I congratulate you as the community for gathering around and arguing the case that this should be preserved for the future. Yeah. And so what I want to say to you loud and clear today is together with uh, Susan, uh, I, as Prime Minister of Australia, want to work with you to preserve this square as it is for the future. And there's a way in which you can do that, and that's through the appropriate uh, national heritage listing processes. And what I would say is that we'll work with you as a local community and local community organisations to achieve that end. Because I think it's too an important part, too much of an important part of our history to simply consign to Barry O'Farrell's Department of Main Roads. And, um, and Doug and I spoke about this some time ago. He rings me up on the phone, tells me this history of this place. I hadn't been out here since I was a kid. And I said, oh yeah, Windsor, yeah, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, knew a bit about it. And uh, I said, one of the Macquarie towns. And, uh, and he said, well, they want to wreck the square. I said, well, that's not on. And uh, Doug said, what can, you, what can we do about it? And, uh, and I said, well, you tell me, Doug. He said, well, if you come up with an offer uh, to the New South Wales government for them to help identify an alternative route to uh, cross the Hawkesbury River here, then that's the best way to indicate that it's not just politics and win, but it actually means something. So based on all that, we uh, offered Barry O'Farrell uh, half a million dollars sure. to engage in a study of uh, an alternative crossing for the river. Yeah. And that's what... Uh, we've done. I haven't got a letter back from Mr O'Farrell yet um, and I think his plan to put effectively, as I, if I understand it, is it a four-lane carriageway down there? Two or two, two lane. Two, lines. two lane carriageway and then across a new bridge through there would so fundamentally destroy uh, the historical um, uh, aspects of this site that frankly you're kissing goodbye to history. Yeah, so my, cha true. my challenge to uh, Barry O'Farrell and the local Liberal member for this part of the world uh, is very simple. Get on board. Yeah. Make sure this is preserved. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to preserving historical sites, don't be on the wrong side of history. <laughs> and this is part of Australia's history. So what I, want, what I want to say to you today is that number one, I'm a bit of a history buff, 
I love this stuff, I'm on board with you. We need to work together to make sure this is kept for the future. Number two, we put our money where our mouth is to offer the New South Wales government half a million bucks to begin planning an alternative crossing. Because there's lots of traffic here. Everyone knows there's got to be another crossing. I get that. But it doesn't have to be here. It doesn't have to be here. And number three is, organise yourselves with the continued pressure of people power. Elect Susan as your local member. And on top of that, take the message loud and clear to your local council and to Macquarie Street and to Macquarie Street and let them know that you're the people and you don't think this is a good idea. And tell them on the way through the Prime Minister doesn't either. Okay? So, so folks, um, in the period ahead, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, two days left in this election campaign. I'll be fighting right through until six o'clock on Saturday night. And one of the reasons I'm fighting is be fighting for folk like you who stand up for your community. Folk like you who want decent education, decent computers in your school. Folk like you who want to become, a, become an international aid worker in the future. Folk like you who are looking out for your grandkids in terms of whether they're going to have a decent planet to inherit in the future by action on climate change. That's what I'm fighting for. That's what Susan's fighting for. That's what Doug's fighting for. And that's what you, the good people of Windsor, are fighting for as well. Thank you for having Three me. Cheers.